Welcome back. All right, so before I do the power rankings, I want to mention something that a lot of people are talking about in one of my recaps from earlier. I didn't talk about Tampa Bay benching their, their top line or whoever was benched because I don't talk about who gets benched during a game. It's not a big deal. It really isn't because the next game they play. Now, if they don't play the next game, then it's a big deal. But when you lose a game, benching players is just coaching. It's just sending a message. It's really not a big deal. I've never talked about players being benched. The only time I talk about it is like the Rangers with Schneider and Carpenter the other night where they were on the bench, but they weren't allowed to take a shift. That's weird. I will gladly talk about that. But guys getting benched, it, it happens a lot in the National Hockey League. And so I, I don't feel like it's necessarily a big deal to mention in recap videos. Anyways, there you go. Uh, so we're going to start off the power rankings with number 32 because it would be weird if I started with one. So at number 32, same spot as last week. I see no reason to make a change now. And that's the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, for the Coyotes, uh, they've been number 32 now. Uh, two weeks in a row. They were 30 the week before that. Um, they were 31 the week before that. So Arizona's been down at near the bottom for a long time now. And that's probably where they're going to reside the rest of the year. They were sellers at the deadline, which we all expected. We all knew they would be. Arizona's rebuild's taking a long time. And that's kind of by design. Uh, they're, they're building up all these assets. They've got 22 draft picks in the top three rounds over the next three years. It's ridiculous. But when you have that many, it means you're going to get some good players because you kind of have to, or else you have to fire your scouting department. Uh, number 31, dropping three spots from last week, Philadelphia. Uh, so for the Flyers, uh, they didn't sell at the deadline. They kind of stood pat, and I know everybody's doing you know, the, the dunking on uh, Chuck Fletcher, and I get it, I totally get it. But for me, I, I don't think that Philadelphia had much there that had any value. Yes, it would have been great to get a third rounder, I guess, for Van Riemsdyk, but there really wasn't anybody in an expiring contract for Philly that had a lot of value. So Philadelphia, they, they make the McEwen trade. That's about all they can get done. And you can then say, well, if they don't have any value, isn't that on Fletcher? The answer to that is yes. Uh, number 30, dropping four spots from last week. Let me just move this stuff out of the way. I shall say stuff because I'm on YouTube, and of course I have to say the word stuff. I may not say stuff if I wasn't on camera. We'll move that stuff in order to make room for this puck here. Get this puck out. Dropping four spots, Chicago. So Chicago's down to 30th. Uh, they sold off their offense that was Max Domi at the deadline. Uh, Patrick Kane, of course, being sold off to the Rangers and a lot being said of that trade. And of course, that Kane would only go to one team, so either Chicago takes that offer or they get nothing for Kane. And for Kyle Davidson, he could not afford to get nothing for Kane and Taves. He had to get something, right? So number 30 is Chicago. Uh, their attack was pretty weak tonight, and I expect it to be pretty weak the rest of the season. Uh, number 29, and dropping two spots from last week, the San Jose Sharks. Uh, for the Sharks, they had a seven-game homestand. They won one game on that seven-game seven homestand. One. Um, yeah, San Jose, It's it's been a rough go of it. They've only won six games at home all season. So they're not playing spoiler very well. They're also the only team in the National Hockey League with less than 20 wins on the season. And they may very well end up being the team that gets Bedard. Could happen. Colum I could see a situation where Columbus ends up passing them. Chicago ends up passing them. Anaheim already has, so they're really not that far from the bottom. And so for San Jose... They could definitely use Bedard, absolutely. Uh, number 28, also Bedard hunting are the Ducks. Uh, the Ducks move up two spots from where they were last week. Uh, some of this is by default in that Chicago and, and San Jose had rough weeks, so Anaheim moves up a couple of spots. Uh, Anaheim playing out the string, but this is where we get into the players don't tank category of things. Players really don't tank in the National Hockey League. Uh, your general manager just tries to make it so it's as difficult to win as possible. So when Gary Bettman says players, coaches don't tank, he's right. But GMs and owners definitely signal when the tank should be on. And for Anaheim, it's it's been one of those years. So um, while I like what they did at the deadline, it really is about looking to the future. Number 27. And... 
Moving up two spots from last week, Columbus. Columbus Blue Jackets, 27th on the board. It's the highest they've been in a while, isn't it? Uh, they were 32nd, 28th. Uh, last week they were 29th. This week, 27th. Yes, the highest they've been in a while. Uh, Columbus is playing spoiler. Now, tonight against Ottawa, they didn't play it that well because Ottawa, desperate for victories. Finally, Ottawa's going on that winning streak that I've talked about for months. Is it too late is the one question I have in the back of my mind. But uh, yeah, Columbus was the victim tonight. Uh, then we can get into, did Stutzla trip Blankenberg? And if you're a Columbus fan, I have a feeling I know the answer to that. If that game had been in Columbus, I think the crowd would have been pretty loud about that one. But at any rate, it ends up being a, a 5-2 to two goal. I, I don't think Columbus was going to beat them anyways. And they're 27th on the board. Number 26. And dropping two spots from last week. Montreal. So movement around the bottom of the board, uh, which is good. And, and I think this is predictable because it feels like right now we're seeing results that are kind of all over the place. Teams getting hot, getting cold, and from one night to the next, it's hard to tell who's playing well. Montreal, a couple of three to two losses back to back. And I, I mean, it's just this is the kind of season Montreal is having. And I, I would expect that to continue. Uh, we we aren't all that surprised, are we? Because Cole Caulfield began out of the lineup, definitely hurt, and then they don't have they don't have Doc. They just got Gooley back, but uh, there there's a lot of missing pieces for Montreal. A lot of intriguing pieces for the future, though. I'm really excited to see what they put together for next year. What can Kent Hughes do with this lineup in the off season? I I honestly think for Montreal the turnaround, and I've said this in recent videos. I don't know that the turnaround is going to take that long. I'm not saying playoffs next year, but I, I honestly think with all the assets they have and all of the prospects and everything, it, with the right signings and the right moves, they could be competitive fast. Number 25, moving up six spots from last week, Vancouver. Uh, when they have theme nights, they really should make sure the pucks are available before the theme night. At any rate, Vancouver moves up six spots from last week. Technically, I should be wearing a Vancouver jersey because they moved up the most of anybody on the board. But it kind of feels like it's by default. So they get the win over Toronto. They move up over a bunch of teams because they had a good week. Demko being back absolutely helps. And Demko playing like Demko absolutely helps. And it's it's a reminder that with a healthy Demko and with Patterson producing, this is a team that could be around the middle of the pack. But is this a team that's going to build towards Cup? And that's where the question mark is. And I, I know that I'm one of the, the negative Nancys on the whole conversation where I've said, and I've, I've meant it, I, I don't think Vancouver wins the Stanley Cup in my lifetime, uh, but I'd, I'd love for them to prove me wrong. It's not like if it happens, I'm going to be all upset and sad, but I, I just don't, I don't see it. So at any rate, uh, their deadline was quiet, a little quieter than I think people might have expected, and yet the moves they did make, there was a head-scratcher in the Hronik deal, but we'll see how it turns out. That's more of a next-year thing. Anyways, uh, number 24. I say that because he's hurt right now. Number 24, moving up one spot from last week. The Blues. So the Blues get out of the, out of the bottom row. Uh, they lost tonight against LA, but again... Uh, this is this is a row that it should be relatively easy to get out of if you go on a bit of a hot streak. Uh, for St. Louis, it's not a hot streak, but they're respectable. Uh, they sold at the deadline. But I thought it was interesting they picked up Verana. I thought it was interesting they picked up Kapanen. Um, they're, they're picking up players that tell me that St. Louis doesn't expect to be in this position next year. That I, I think they're hoping for a quick turnaround. Not that different from what Vancouver might be banking on for next season. Uh, we'll see how it goes for the Blues, but I, I do think that that's what they're hoping for. You know, Bennington's been very good. If they can resolve some of their defensive issues and they can take some of the money they've saved with guys who've been traded out and pick up the right pieces in the offseason, who knows? St. Louis could be back in the mix. Number 23, and sadly, dropping two spots from last week is Calgary. And it's sad because I love this jersey, but it seems to come along at a time when they're not necessarily that great. Remember the late 90s when this came along? But at any rate, uh, for the Calgary Flames, they dropped two spots from last week. They lose 3 0 at home against Minnesota, a game they desperately need. And when you looked, if if you watched that game and you looked at the, the bench, and they had a camera angle that showed each player, and they just they just panned from one player to the next to the next. Everybody in Calgary looks miserable right now. So I, I have to say that while, you know, there was the Alan Walsh thing about uh, Huberto and all that, 
this is a team that's pretty miserable and and they have to break out of it because they're still in the hunt they're not that far out but they have to as daryl sutter said today a 20 game winning streak would be great it's not going to happen and it just it feels like for calgary they've been in this malaise for months they're not getting out of it I'm not sure what the answer is but they didn't buy at the deadline they didn't sell at the deadline clearly they're just kind of wait and see on everything right now and we'll have to wait and see how it turns out for them number 22 same spot as last week washington so for the caps they're four and seven in their last 11 uh they absolutely destroyed san jose tonight but san jose right st louis beat san jose as well uh and beating san jose in san jose is kind of a standard given thing uh but ovechkin gets a couple of goals maybe the eight goals they get against san jose maybe that rolls over maybe they get their confidence back they did sell at the deadline, but there are some fascinating pieces like Iorio in the lineup tonight. Uh, the, there are some interesting parts to this roster right now with guys who've been sold off. I, I don't know that it's a full sell that's been done. There's still enough pieces here that the Caps should stay in the hunt for that final playoff spot. Ultimately, I don't think they get there, but if they stay in the hunt, it could be very interesting. All right, number 21. Uh, dropping two spots from last week which is too bad because Nashville, I think, is still in this. But the way that they sold at the deadline, uh, it does feel like that game against Chicago. They won the game against Chicago, but it, it feels like the heart's gone out of the team. And it, it, it just feels like they're, they're off at this point. We'll see how it goes this coming week. They've won seven of their last 11. But when you trade out the guys they have, uh, it does signal that, this season's probably done and, and that David Poyle's admitting it's probably done. However, this coming summer, Barry Trotz takes over. We'll see what he does with the roster and what he does with the team. I don't think Nashville's going to stay down for that long. I think Nashville should be competitive next year. Similar to St. Louis, this is a down year. We are now in a league where half the league misses the playoffs. This is how it should be. I love this setup and I love that there are arguably... Uh, 22 teams that are still in the hunt for a playoff spot, and we're about six weeks out from the playoffs. I think that's great. It's going to be great for the games down the stretch. Uh, number 20, dropping four spots from last week, and uh, and that's the Jets. So the Jets get the win tonight, but that's after six straight losses. Um, so they went from being a team that couldn't score, and now they're a team that can't prevent the other team from scoring. And this this is just, it's not... It's not a pretty picture right now. They get the, the the revenge win over Edmonton, yes, but those two games to me just it 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 doesn't paint a pretty picture for where Winnipeg's at right now. They're above the playoff line. They're still going to end up in the playoffs. I I don't think that either Nashville or Calgary are going to end up taking that last spot, but Winnipeg has to start winning in a more regular fashion, and they have to rediscover their game. Um, I heard a criticism of Nick Ehlers not getting enough goals. I think it was Anson Carter that was talking about Nick Ehlers not getting enough goals. I I put that on him coming back from injury. I don't think he's 100%. But he's generated assists. He's still generating opportunities. And that's important. But Winnipeg as a team, it's there's just something that's off. They're far too talented a team to be in this spot on the board. So... I'm hoping that in the coming weeks that the six-game losing streak that they just emerged from with tonight's win, and I wasn't moving them up a bunch of spots because of one win, a 7-5 to five victory over the Oilers, um, I, I, I do hope that we're looking back at that six-game losing streak and saying we learned a lot during that, and now we're, we're ready to you know roll into the playoffs and have some confidence. Because I'd like to see Winnipeg do well. I would like to see Winnipeg do well in the playoffs. Uh, number 19. And this one's, this one's tough. Uh, dropping seven spots from last week is Detroit. So there's a combination of reasons for this. First off, those games against Ottawa, they were not as good as Ottawa. It wasn't close. Then uh, Iserman sells at the deadline, and then there's today's game as well. And it just, for Detroit, it is, it, it's better luck next year. We've, we've gone from they could make the playoffs last week to this week of better luck next year. The good news is, I think Iserman selling Hronik is a brilliant move. I think having two potential top 15 draft picks in this draft, really, really smart on his part. And even if, let's say, the Islanders make the playoffs and that pick becomes 16 or 17, they can still use their two draft picks and move up unless they win the draft lottery with theirs, right? 
Um, there's a lot that Detroit can do at the draft table, and I think they will. I think Iserman's going to be aggressive. The fact that he tried to get Van Riemsdyk means this wasn't a complete sell. He just wasn't able to get the money in order to acquire Van Riemsdyk. But I, I, I do have a lot of optimism for Detroit. Just they take the major drop this week because everything went against them. It just, it, as soon as basically Sunday morning started and right through until tonight, uh, it's been a disaster for for the for the Red Wings. And I feel bad for Mickey Redmond because you can hear it in his voice that he realizes uh, this year's done. But uh, hope for next year. Uh, number 18. And moving up five spots from last week is Ottawa. So there will be some calls that Ottawa should be higher on the board. I'm sure there will be those calls. Uh, but a five spot jump to me is that's about where Ottawa should be. And again, just above Detroit, the team they beat twice this week. Uh, for Ottawa, things are looking really well. They're, they're looking excellent for them right now. Uh, whether or not they make the playoffs, I don't think is the key. I think the key is that Pierre Dorian uh, gets Claude Giroux to buy in by going out and getting Jacob Chikrin. That he gave a player his word and he lived up to it is important. Players remember that kind of thing. It's something that Brian Burke had in Vancouver and it endeared him to players. So, so by him saying, I'm not selling at the deadline and he lived up to that and then I will get you a defenseman and he lives up to that as well. Uh, he earns loyalty from players, and and he earns their trust, and I think that's important. And it uh, it feels like the Sens right now have kind of come together as a team. So even if they fall short in this dream to make the playoffs, I am very hopeful for them for the future. I think that the Atlantic Division next year could end up being the toughest from top to bottom. Because again, I don't think Montreal is going to be this bad. I think Detroit's going to be in the mix. Buffalo's in the mix right now. Ottawa's in the mix right now. Uh, I think this division is going to be very good because I don't think Tampa Bay, Toronto, Boston, I don't think they drop off either. Uh, there may be somewhat of a drop off by one or two of them, but I don't think they're going to fall into like this area, right? I think maybe in this area, sure, but bottom half of the board, probably not. So the Atlantic, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do over the summer. Number 17, moving up one spot from last week, New York Islanders. So the Islanders, uh, it's been a... a a, a good run for them recently, uh, and they, they do look like they should make the playoffs. They're still in the bottom half of the board. They do move up one spot. I am hopeful they make it because I'd love to see Bo Horvat in the playoffs again. He tends to be quite good in said playoffs. And, of course, Ilya Sorokin would not be easy to beat in the playoffs either. So there's a lot of reasons to think if the Islanders get in, they could be a headache. If they're the number two wild card and they play Boston, that could be a huge headache for Boston. Because Sorokin is that good of a goaltender. He could steal at least a game or two in that series, and then all bets are off. Uh, number 16. Moving up four spots from last week. Penguins. Uh, so the Penguins are back on the top half of the board. Uh, they don't move up as much as they would have had they beaten Florida tonight. Uh, the game against Florida... We'll see whether or not that's a one-off. It is interesting because, as I mentioned in the recap video tonight, Pittsburgh has been so hot and cold that now that they lost that game against Florida and how it, they, they looked all out of sorts at points, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, so is this another cold cold streak we've got coming up for Pittsburgh? We'll find out over the next week or two. Uh, they really can't afford it, though, because there are a lot of teams that are playing very well behind them. So they need to make sure that this, this, this streak ends at one and they get back on a hot streak immediately. Number 15, dropping one spot from last week. But still in the top half of the board is Florida. Uh, Florida, the inconsistency is madness and maddening. But that game against Pittsburgh, that's kind of the exact sort of game that you want if you're a Florida fan, if you want to see them make the playoffs. So that's good news. Uh, they keep pace with the Caps. They have the same record, but the Caps much colder lately than Florida. And so we'll see how, how things go for Florida from here. And if they can get some momentum going. Because again, those playoff spots are there for the taking. They absolutely are. While the Islanders and the Penguins are the ones that occupy those spots, uh, there are teams beneath them that could end up occupying those spots, including the Florida Panthers. Uh, number 13 on the, or number 14 on the board, I should say, is Dallas. So the Dallas Stars move up three spots from last week. Uh, they get out of that third row, which is good because they shouldn't be in the third row as a team that's leading their division. But when you've won three of your last 10 games, that can happen. Now, 
This week they won three in a row, but they beat Arizona, they beat Chicago. I did not move them up the board for beating Arizona and Chicago. However, the win over Colorado, impressive as it was, they do move up the board based on that win. We'll see if that's something that they can sustain this coming week, if the effort remains at this level. Uh, Marchment getting his first goal in forever was big. Him and Domi and Sagan on the same line could be filthy. Um, and seeing Pavelski finally get his first goal in, I think it was 18 games, thankfully. Uh, they're both off the schneid. That's really important for Dallas if they're going to maintain their spot at the top of the division because uh, Minnesota's coming on. Colorado had a rough day today against Dallas, but I wouldn't rule out Colorado for that division as of yet either. Number 13 on the board, moving up two spots from last week. I'm sure there are some fans asking, well, where are we? Buffalo. Buffalo's all the way up to 13. Uh, the wins over Tampa Bay have been very impressive. That win today was really impressive. Um, now, of course, everybody making a big deal over the fact that Tampa Bay benches, guys. Let's focus on the fact that Buffalo had a great game. That's where my focus was. Buffalo played fantastic. And, I mean, it helps that the team on the other side wasn't very sharp. But Buffalo was great. So, honestly... Uh, right now, if you look at the points percentage, they would end up beating out the Islanders if it continues to trend in the direction it is. Their points percentage is better than the New York Islanders right now. So, and again, they won that game at home. That's a big one. So they did get destroyed by Boston this week. Yep, but guess what? You lose to Boston, I do not move your team down on the board because right now everybody loses to Boston. So I, I don't even view that. I don't even care what the score is. I just go, well, they lost to Boston. I do not move a team down the board for losing to the Bruins. It doesn't happen. Does not happen. Uh, in October, sure. At this point, nope. Boston's record is ridiculous. I don't see that as a reason to bump a team down. So Buffalo ends up moving up this week despite that trashing they took from Boston. Number 12, dropping a couple of spots this week. More of a reflection of the teams around them, though, and that's Seattle. Uh, Seattle's still making the playoffs. Uh, they've had their, their their struggle, their bobble over the last month, but they're still. I think they're still going to make the playoffs. I don't think the teams behind them are going to catch them, and I think Seattle from here. I think their record is, or I think their schedule is not that bad. Again, strength of schedule. I don't pay as much attention to because after the deadline, it can be really unpredictable. Because a lot of the teams that are at the top of this board are going to start resting resting guys here and there soon. Especially Boston could end up resting guys soon. So. Strength of schedule is what it is, but it, it, it should be taken as, as with a grain of salt at this point. St. Louis, Seattle, though, uh, a playoff team right now, should make it, and I'm I'm very excited. Bruce Boudreaux yesterday on Trade Center said he'd like to see Seattle make it as well. So, it honestly, it's a great underdog story if they get in. How many of us would love to see Seattle against Vegas in the playoffs? I know I would, so uh, we'll see if that's where we end up. Uh, number 11, and moving up two spots from last week. The Oilers. Now, Edmonton takes a lot of criticism, and I, I get it, because anytime they lose, there will be that criticism. So tonight they lost 7-5 to against Winnipeg. Sloppy game. Winnipeg played some desperate hockey. Last night, of course, Edmonton beats them. Uh, Edmonton also has had some really good games this week. And I, I, I do think that uh, what we're seeing with them, and again, they lost against Boston. doesn't matter. Um, losing, losing against Boston, just that's, that's what happens. Uh, but McDavid with 52 goals right now, and Dreisaitl with, it's 41 now, right? He had the hat trick tonight. Yeah, things are going pretty well for the Oilers, and we'll see how it goes. The one question with the Pacific is goaltending, and it is a question mark with the Oilers as well. Uh, Skinner should be the starting goaltender for them in the playoffs, obviously, and we'll see how it goes for them from there. But yeah, the Oilers at number 11. Uh, number 10, dropping four spots from last week. Now, I did see the comment. I did see the comment that said Tampa Bay shouldn't be in the top 15. I'm I'm not moving Tampa Bay down that much. Uh, did they have a good week? No. Here's the thing with Tampa Bay. So every year, Tampa Bay, towards the end of the schedule, has these times, right? Uh, two years ago, going into the playoffs, I believe it was, I think it was two years ago, I had Tampa Bay 12th on the board going into the playoffs because they weren't playing well. And then the playoffs roll around and oh, they won the Stanley Cup. And so I, I don't read too much into it. And people, I think, are reading way too much into Tampa Bay's struggles right now. They're still going to finish third in the division. They are 11 points clear of anybody behind them when it comes to fourth place in that division. 
Uh, I don't think they care if they have home ice advantage against Toronto because they haven't needed home ice advantage. They were the third place team in in their division. Uh, I think both years they won the Stanley Cup, they were third place in their division. It doesn't matter. And I think they know that. Is I think part of what we're seeing right now might just be that motivation, that they know that the playoffs are six weeks off and maybe they're coasting a little bit. Is that something to watch? Sure. Is it something to be overly concerned about? No. So I've I've moved them down to 10 because they're losing, but I'm not like moving them way down and putting up panic and red flags because we've we've seen this before. Tampa Bay, we've seen this before. I'm I'm not really overly concerned. I'm still probably taking them in a first round series. I, I don't know if it matters who they're against. I think I'm taking them in a first round series. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Tampa Bay. They're number 10 right now on the board. Number nine. And a bit of a drop for them this week as well. Uh, number nine on the board is the New York Rangers. So they drop out of the top row. They drop two spots. Um, Patrick Kane, it's taking him a little bit longer to acclimate to the Rangers. And I, I feel bad because it does take players a while to acclimate to new surroundings. Not everybody's Dmitry Orlov. Not everybody goes into a new new locker room and goes, uh, which, goal sc- or which, which stick's going to score me all the goals? I'll take that one. No, it doesn't work that way. It does take time for a lot of players, especially I would think in Kane's case, where he's used to being the guy. And in New York, he's not really the guy. So he's playing a different role with the Rangers than he's ever played in his entire career. He is older than he's ever been in his entire career, obviously, because that's how time works. And so I'm not panicking about the New York Rangers and the fact that they're 0-2 with him and that he's a minus four. They have a bunch of days off. They play on Thursday. And we'll see if things are better on Thursday. Gerard Gallant will have a better chance to see him and practice and see who he works well with and work on it. So I'm, I'm not concerned about the New York Rangers. I think they're going to be fine. Uh, and so we'll see how it works. But they do drop this week. Number eight. Moving up three spots from last week. Three more spots. Minnesota. I don't know if there's a team on this board that's moved up and down as much as Minnesota. The highest they've been this year is third. I think 20 seconds, the lowest they've been. They're back up to eighth. What's interesting is last week there were some some comments because I said Minnesota's back to playing their game. They're playing really well, and they moved up 11 spots. And I knew that was going to cause some, 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 some blowback. I know that. Uh, but I have no problem backing that up. And I think this week's results back it up too. They're 9-1-2 and two in their last 12 games. They're allowing roughly a goal a game over their last nine. They're scoring about 2.3 over their last nine, but it doesn't matter. So the fact they're not scoring doesn't matter. I'm sure it matters a bit to Kaprizov because his points totals take a hit there. He's not getting 100 points again this year. But who cares? I don't think he cares because Minnesota right now looks excellent. It looks like they could end up finishing first in their division. And I don't think Minnesota's ever finished atop their division. I don't think that's ever happened. So while Dallas gets that big win today, Minnesota's still right there. And so it's kind of an exciting time for Minnesota, even if the games themselves aren't exciting to watch. I think Dean Evison figured out about three weeks ago, this isn't working. We need to completely change our game. And they did. And and kudos to the players on the team for taking uh, direction, taking it well. And right now, Minnesota's playing. I, like, look at that game in Calgary tonight. That was a perfect road game. Absolutely perfect road game. The game in Vancouver, perfect road game. They're just... They're playing that well right now. All right, uh, number seven. Moving up two spots on the board from last week. The LA Kings. Kings are in the top row. Uh, For the Kings, uh, they're playing really well at home. They're winning games. Uh, They're not the most exciting to watch either. That's the interesting part is that it feels like there's some teams right now that are learning to play a more defensive style, which isn't always the most exciting thing to watch, but it's winning. And so uh, while goal scoring has still been up for this season it does feel like in the playoffs we may get back to some really good defensive hockey and there might be some three to one three to two two to one games and some double triple overtime going on too which will excite some fans tick some other fans off but for me as long as it's right in the middle where there's still that exciting hockey and there's that really good defense that's the sweet spot for me and right now the kings are kind of doing both so um, Velarde with his 21st goal. I hope that Byfield's okay too. We'll talk about that. I would think tomorrow we'll get an update on him. I hope he's okay because he got elevated to the top line and his play's been completely different. He's learning to play the wing. He's playing a different style. He's starting to play physically a little bit more, like a little more with the hits and stuff. The kind of hockey that 
everybody said they'd want to see from him in his draft year and they weren't seeing. So yeah, LA is right there. Number six on the board, uh, dropping two spots from last week, Colorado. So Colorado, back-to-back uh, -back games where they allow seven goals, that's an ouch. They also had a shutout victory this week. So we'll see how things go for Colorado this coming week. They drop a couple of spots. Again, I didn't want to overreact and just bust them way down. The record's still been very good over their last month. Uh, Makar's just come back. So once everybody's back and everybody's you know in a good rhythm, they should be fine. Uh, clearly, they've had defensive issues over their last couple of games. And we'll see if it's just if it's a fluke or if it's going to continue. But yeah, so they drop a couple of spots. Not a lot, just a couple of spots. Number five on the board. Same spot as last week. Toronto. Toronto doesn't move up. They don't move down. Um, I think this road trip, it's just they're better at home than they are on the road is where it is with Toronto. There, there are teams in the league that are much better on the road than at home. Toronto's just better at home than they are on the road. Um, I do have some concern. Like tonight, Matthews gets dinged on a shot block. I, and and then they showed the chart and they showed that Pedersen does a lot of shot blocking too. I don't like it when star forwards are out there blocking shots. If a guy's making over ten million a year, and I know it's more than that with with Matthews, I don't think he should be out there shot blocking because the risk is high. And unless somebody has really good technique, it's really easy to have uh, ankle issues, knee issues. Uh, it can hit you on the side of the foot. Like it's just it can be scary. So he came back and played the rest of the game. But again, I, I don't like seeing star players out there shot blocking. I think that's dangerous. That should be left to your third, fourth line guys. The defensemen know how to do all that. I think your star forwards, again, for me just personally, that's my opinion. Other opinions are out there. That's perfectly fine. But I always kind of get nervous. And I, I do that with Pedersen too when I see them shot blocking. Fans cheer and everybody loves it. Like, oh, look at them sacrificing the body. Yeah, and if that body gets hurt and they end up out for an extended period of time, is it worth it at that point, right? So yeah, number five. Number four, uh, moving up four spots from last week. I had considered wearing their jersey, but I think I've worn a Vegas jersey a few times over the last couple of weeks. So I went with Pittsburgh instead. But yeah, Vegas is playing really, really well. Uh, now, New Jersey fans will say, well, they didn't know play New Jersey, you know, Aiden Hill kind of stole that one. Yeah, but they got two points against New Jersey, which not many not many teams have been able to do. They also beat Carolina. So Vegas is showing that the narrative that's out there, and I keep hearing it, that no team in the West can even think about beating a team from the East in the Stanley Cup Final. I think Vegas can do it. I also think Colorado can do it. Um, I would think of the teams in the West. I, I don't think Dallas can necessarily do it, but if they get all the way to the Stanley Cup Final... I'll be excited and hoping that I'm wrong on that. But yeah, I do think that Vegas and Colorado are two exceptions. These are teams that could absolutely take any team out of the East, I think, to a full seven games. With Vegas, it's going to be who's the goaltender for that seven-game series. And I don't know that we know the answer right now. Um, you know, Thompson's out. You've got Aiden Hill. You've got Brassois. And now you've got Jonathan Quick. And I'm not sure that we know who's going to be the guy. So that's the one caveat that I would have with Vegas who's going to be the goaltender. Uh, number three, dropping one spot from last week, Carolina. So the Canes, a couple of losses this week, and they just get passed. Uh, I felt like they weren't as sharp this week as another team on the board. I will say this for Carolina, that huge trashing that they gave Arizona, that could be huge. That could be huge for them because they finally had a game that was kind of a laugher. They played really well. And they got a bunch of goals. And that's what they, they needed to get a bunch of goals. Much like Dallas today against against Colorado. Teams that really needed to break out, have a bunch of goals, get that offense flowing. If Carolina can do that, they're going to be in good shape. And then once Pugliarvi joins the team, we'll see if he helps them as well. Um, I know there's some scoffing at the idea that Pugliarvi can turn his game around. But we have seen with Carolina how they can help players turn their game around. Even if it doesn't just involve offense, it might involve just their all-around game. So... Uh, Carolina drops one spot, but they're still in contention, obviously. Number two, and uh, moving up one spot from last week is New Jersey. Yep, the Devils. Uh, Devils are up to number two on the board now. Uh, they have 40 wins. Uh, they did have the shootout loss against Vegas last night, but they get the point that Carolina didn't get against Vegas, and I just I think New Jersey is playing a little bit better than Carolina. I mentioned this in last week's Power Rankings. 
I think the top three teams on this board are playing really, really closely to one another. I think they're all very, very, um, they're, they're very good teams that are playing very well and it is hard to pick and choose between them. So for New Jersey, they're number two this week. They could easily be down to number three next week, but Carolina and New Jersey are both right there and they're fighting for the same spot. So they're both fighting for first in the Metro and I think that's kind of exciting. Which means number one on the board this week, same spot as they were last week, Boston. Uh, the Boston Bruins now on a 10-game winning streak. It's just ridiculous. 10-game winning streak is insane. Uh, they just don't lose two in a row. This is a team that's figured out, you know, if we don't lose two in a row all season, we're probably going to have a really good record. And they arguably got better at the deadline. I say arguably because I talked about the Rangers and how your chemistry can get thrown off by new players. It, it, it can. And so with Boston adding guys at the deadline... While I like the additions, I also had a little bit of concern of what could this do to chemistry, especially with Felino getting hurt when he was playing the best hockey he has as a Bruin. Uh, Taylor Hall getting hurt when he was playing the best hockey he has as a Bruin. So for anybody who's out there thinking, well, they took them out of the lineup because, you know, they then they can go over the cap. If they were going to pull two guys out of the lineup, it would not have been Taylor Hall and Nick Felino. They were both playing really well at the time of their injuries. Uh, it would have been somebody else. So, yeah, for Boston, I, I think that 10-game winning streak is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I agree with people that with a record that's this good, uh, watch the first round of the playoffs. We have seen teams that, that have really excellent records, and then it just doesn't work. Obviously, most recently, you're going to have Tampa. Uh, you go back to 1996, you look at that Detroit team. They had a ridiculous record, and they lost in the conference final against Colorado. Uh, but they won the Stanley Cup in 97 and 98. So while I don't expect Stanley Cups for Boston next year and the year after, at the very least, they have a good chance. Boston has a good chance, and that's better than I'd expect to coming into this season. So kudos to them for overachieving. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.